Walter's past is reminiscent of the stormy sea waves that sometimes appear around the rock-covered coastline of this small yet remarkable island located in the southern Mediterranean. With its massive walls and deep moats, the well-fortified exterior of the island's capital of Valletta dates back to the Great Siege of 1565. After the war with the Turks was eventually won, the Christian rulers decided to create a new fortified city here. The star-shaped Fort St. Elmo was conquered and destroyed by the Turks during the Great Siege. However, two years later, the rebuilding of the fortress began. In the years that followed, the fortress was extended and further fortified by the Knights of St. John. One section of the fortress contains the War Museum. Even today, the fort captivates due to its strategic location on a headland at the end of a peninsula upon which the historic city of Valletta is built. Dominated by numerous wars, the history of Malta is extensively covered by the War Museum, whose fascinating exhibits range from the 16th to the 20th century. The Lower Baraka Gardens date back to British colonial times. In 1814, Malta became an official colony of the Crown just a few years after Napoleon's army had occupied the island. Following various wars, cruel sieges and brutal invasions, the inhabitants of Malta decided to secure peace and order by becoming part of the British Empire. Upper Baraka Gardens were also created by the British. Up until the 17th century, the parade ground of the legendary Maltese Knights of St. John was located there. Today, the gardens are a popular place to relax. And from here, are the most beautiful views of the harbour below. The townscape of Valletta is still a fascinating sight, even though the city suffered considerably during the Second World War when it was heavily bombed. As one of the first cities in Europe to have been officially designed on a drawing board in the 16th century, Valletta was quite unique. The city planners had no concerns about money, as they were generously sponsored by the Vatican, as well as by both Spain and France. Eventual victory over the Turks was rewarded financially and also by the commissioning of many respected architects who also designed the Auberge de Castile at Lyon. The Auberge were once the headquarters of a language group of the Knights of St. John. The majority of these residences were built at the end of the 16th century.
The most striking feature of the old houses in the heart of Valletta is the traditional balconies that come in all shapes and sizes. They protect the rooms from direct sunlight and keep the interior cool. One of the most beautiful buildings in the historic centre of the city is the small Teatro Manuel that for many centuries has been an important cultural venue. The theatre's impressively decorated interior is a truly fascinating architectural gem. The glamour of the Teatro Manuel is only exceeded by the former Grand Master's Palace that is now the official seat of the President and also home of the Parliament of the Maltese Republic. Gerolamo Cassa, Malta's greatest architect of the 16th century, was responsible for the construction of the palace. The focal point in the interior of the Grand Master's Palace is the tapestry room, whose resplendent wooden ceiling and beautiful Gobelin tapestries are an impressive sight. Even here, an historic collection of weaponry and armory indicates the island's military past and its famous religious order of the Knights of St. John of Jerusalem that later became the Maltese order. The former hospital of the Knights of St. John of Jerusalem, the Sacra Infirmaria, was once one of the finest and most famous hospitals within the Mediterranean region. Due to the highly detailed reconstruction of its many original features, the historic everyday life of this important hospital can be seen once more. For the hospitalers, the creation of a hospital was of the utmost priority. St. John's Co-Cathedral is one of the island's most prized cultural treasures. The magnificently equipped church that was built between 1573 and 1577 is regarded as being one of the most beautiful architectural creations of Gerolamo Casar. The cathedral is the final resting place of many of Malta's grand masters. The man responsible for the name of the island's capital and the heroic defender of the great siege, Jean Parisot de la Valette, was buried here. Containing several valuable treasures, the St. Paul Shipwreck Church is a reminder of St. Paul who arrived in Malta in 60 AD after his ship was wrecked. Although the Maltese Knights of Valletta have now been assigned to the history books, their cultural heritage is still very much alive on this small yet fascinating Mediterranean island. <laughs>